If you've ever wondered how this becomes this, so have we. So we asked Richard Sutton and Christy Kay of St. James Cheese Company in New Orleans to give us the skinny. Cheese making is a process of using microbes, enzymes, and salt to make nutritious but perishable milk last longer. People started making cheese, humans started making cheese whenever we did that a long time ago. Um, they did that because they were looking for a way to preserve the nutritional value of milk uh, over a period of time when they weren't otherwise able to get fresh milk. Milk looks like a very simple white substance, but it's actually very complex. And a glass of milk basically has a handful of things. There's water, there's a bunch of protein floating around in there, there's fat, there's vitamins and minerals, and there's sugar, also known as lactose. The trick to turning milk into cheese is removing the water while keeping most of the other good stuff, since less moisture makes it harder for spoilage microbes to grow. And adding good bacteria and fungi makes it harder for the bad ones to get a leg up. So cheesemakers start by adding those good microbes to the milk. Lactic acid bacteria lower the pH of the milk, which helps it to solidify, and also helps the cheesemaker control what other microbes are going to grow in there. Cheese making is a little bit like mimicking the way that we would digest, digest milk, you know? Um, so if we drink milk, or we take milk from your mother or whatever, you have that, there are enzymes in our stomach that, that actually breaks that fluid down. Then the cheesemakers add rennet. Rennet is an enzyme that traditionally comes from the stomach of a cow, but vegetarian versions can be made from plants or microbes. Regardless of the source, rennet starts breaking down the milk proteins, which will make it possible to separate them from the water. The main protein in milk is called casein, and the main target of rennet is a version called kappa casein. Casein exists in these globules with kappa casein on the surface. Kappa casein has these very hydrophilic segments that keep the protein suspended in water, but the rennet comes along and chops those off. The casein globules lose their affinity for water and start to stick to each other instead, and the milk proteins start to clump together. Most of the fat, vitamins, and minerals stay with the protein. That group of solids is what they call curds. Most of the sugar drains away with the water, which is called whey. After the rennet does its work, there are a series of steps to getting rid of the whey, bringing the moisture content down from about 85% in milk to between 30 and 60% in cheese, depending on whether you're looking at a nice soft brie or a really hard gouda or something. So the more water you take out of the milk, um, the harder the cheese you're gonna get, but also the longer the cheese will last, typically, and um, the less kind of microbial activity can, can go on there. But plain curds aren't actually all that tasty, sorry, Miss Muffet. Aging the cheese is a crucial step to making all the delicious different kinds we know and love. Why? More microbes. Mostly molds, some yeast and bacteria, will grow inside the cheese or on the rind. Don't be scared of them, they're here to make things delicious. In regards to desirable bacteria and uh, molds and yeast and things like that, cheesemakers add those in a very controlled way in which they know exactly what they're getting into. Um, some are added in the milk during cheesemaking. Uh, some, some are rubbed on the outside of the cheese after it's become a wheel. Um, some are kind of, like I said, some cheeses are washed in a liquid that has bacteria in it or other things. Cheese is all about microorganisms and bacteria and molds and funguses and all kinds of cool things. Um, it's alive. I mean, cheese is, is absolutely, totally alive. Aging gives those microbes time to grow and develop their funky flavors. And it's all about creating an environment where the right microbes will thrive and create the perfect cheese. Finally, we wanted to know, if milk is white, why is cheese yellow? Apparently, there are a couple of reasons. So when cows are uh, kept on grass, typically, the milk will acquire a more yellow quality because they are unable to digest the beta carotene in the grass. And you wind up with a golden hue. That's a good thing. We like cows when eat grass because it makes tasty milk and it makes tasty cheese. Cheese can take on a natural buttery yellow hue from beta carotene, an orange pigment and relative of vitamin A. However, all those protein clusters scatter light and make milk look white. The beta carotene is hidden. Beta carotene is soluble in fat, so during the cheese making process, it stays with the solids and becomes more concentrated and more visible to our eyes. But 
consumers started associating that color with healthier cows and better milk, so cheese manufacturers started, hmm, punching it up a bit by adding a natural coloring agent called annatto. Annatto is derived from the tropical achiote tree and can be used as a mild spice, but cheesemakers are more interested in its vivid color. The fluorescent orange color you see in grocery store cheddar is an artifact of history, not an integral part of the cheese. It has been hypothesized by some that it might have been the fact that cheesemakers did that because they knew that cows that were fed on grass produce a better quality milk, so they said, wow, I'm, you know, in the winter time, maybe I'm just going to put a little bit of, a little something in there because it's going to look better at the market when I bring it to the market to sell it. They would have milk that was, you know, lovely foraged milk or whatever, the cow, the cow was eating grass, and when you skim the, the butter fat off the top, um, it, it removes a lot of that beta carotene in the butter, so it looks lighter colored. Um, and then basically they would add color to make it look like it was a full fat cheese. Anything that's, any, any cheese that's oranger than like a buttercup yellow or, or a, um, you know, like a nice rich butter yellow, that's typically they're adding annatto to the cheese. So that's how milk becomes cheese in all its delicious, delicious glory. We've been eating cheese on this planet for a couple thousand years and we'll probably do it for another couple thousand years, I hope, so. Thanks for watching and a huge, huge thanks to Richard and Christy from St. James Cheese Company. Check them out if you're ever in New Orleans. And if you want us to keep making more cool videos like this one, remember to subscribe, turn on notifications so you'll know every time we post a new super awesome video, and send it to everyone you know. And if you don't like them, send it to them twice because it'll really annoy them. Now if you'll excuse me, I have a date with some cheese. We'll see you next week.